presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are LA. The Angels go for a season high fifth win in a row this afternoon in the middle game of a three game weekend series at Camden Yards in Baltimore. Hi everybody this is Terry Smith along with Mark Gubasaw. Mark the Angels are playing some very good baseball right now and we'll see if they can keep it rolling today. Yeah Terry you mentioned that winning streak they've won four games in a row. The reason why is because the offense has been there for the pitching staff. You're talking about swinging the bats exceptionally well. Averaging eight and a half runs per game. They scored at least five runs in each of those games. Ten multi run innings batting average with runners in scoring position at 436 and the pitching has been good because they're getting supported with some runs especially early in the games that's the important thing for this pitching staff get some early runs go out there relax relax and attack the strike zone we'll be coming up with more from Baltimore right after this. Brought to you by Hyundai. Great deals on amazing cars are going on now at your Hyundai dealer. Visit buyhyundai.com today. By Jack in the Box, the Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack is back. Taste it before it's gone. By Mercury Insurance, on a mission to save you money. Log on to mercuryinsurance.com to get a fast free quote and see how much you can save. And by the Jeep Renegade. Find your inner renegade and reach your highest potential with an EPA estimated 31 highway miles per gallon. Well, they're not quite ready on the field yet, so let's step away for a moment, and we'll be right back with the lineups and today's first pitch.
Getting close to the start of today's game. The Angels in action taking on the Baltimore Orioles. Angels have had a good road trip, five and three so far in this trip. Let's take a look at the Angels lineup here today. You know, Escobar, who is currently fourth in the league in batting, will lead it off at third. Cole Calhoun right behind him. The all star Mike Trout in center field. Albert Pujols, the cleanup batter. Daniel Nava elevated to the number five slot. G Man Choi, who just arrived on the scene for the Angels, he's filling in for CJ Chrome. We'll talk about that. Johnny Giavitella, Jet Bandy, who ends up winning the uh, backup catcher's role, if you will, although he's in the starting lineup now. Carlos Perez sent back down to AAA, and Angels have uh, recalled off the disabled list Giovanni Soto and, and Trolton Simmons, the Angels shortstop, will hit in the ninth spot with a 10 game hitting streak on the mound is Giovanni Gallardo for Baltimore and Gallardo three and one so far this year ERA high ERA at six point one zero but my go to is to be successful against Gallardo is sit that slow stuff he throws a lot of all speed pitches and drive the lane that means left center to right center approach against me. he'll make some mistakes in or half you can turn on it but think big part of the field on a consistent basis against him today. And the defense for the Boston where you got Kim and the left field Jones in center to Gold Glover. Rickard out in right power arm six outfield assists. Machado all star at third. You got Hardy at short scope at second Davis at first and Joseph Caleb Joseph catching behind the play with Manny Machado two time Gold Glove winner at third base for the Baltimore Orioles back in 2013 and 2015. The only other third baseman in Orioles history win a Gold Glove a guy won a lot of gold. Brooks Robinson 16 straight gold gloves from 1960 through the 75 season. Yeah, it was neat to see him at the ballpark last night in the opener when they honored that 1966 Baltimore World Series championship club. So we are just about ready for the action. Bright sunshine here in Baltimore. Mark was talking about Gallardo and this is only his ninth start of the season. He was on the disabled list going back to the month of May. He had some right shoulder biceps tendonitis. 13 game winner a year ago for the Rangers and the first pitch of the game it's popped up on the third base side it's a foul ball but it's playable and waiting for it to come down and one of the coaching boxes Manny Machado one pitch and one quick out to start off the ball game. Yeah, Gallardo's fastball is going to be around 85 to 89 range he'll throw a two seam four seam fastball a slider curveball change up so not overpowering he spots well he pitches inside very effectively also when he's on a roll. Gallardo signed with the Orioles during the offseason. He was a free agent into two year deal with Baltimore. And again uh, not too much action out of him so far in the first half of the season uh, just under 39 innings of work and the first pitch taken for a strike by Cole Calhoun. He has an eight game hitting streak entering play 286 batting average. See that on base percentage high at 357. Here's the next one on Calhoun and that one missing for ball the home plate umpire is Jordan Baker and he's known as a strike caller he's a pitcher's umpire usually has a decent sized strike zone. As so you can see should, by the size of him, he's pretty tall behind the plate also. <laughs> yep. That should work in the favor of the two starters here today that one a little bit low and inside for a ball. Mike Trout waiting on deck. Trout had two hits last night so did Cole Calhoun. Angels winning their fourth in a row on the trip looking for a season high fifth win in a row. We'll see if it happens here today. And the next one. That's a little bit outside. Three and one on Cole Calhoun. Yeah, you can see what he's trying to do against Cole. He's trying to avoid that middle middle in against him. Little two seam fastball twice away. He tried to backdoor a slider also on the outside part of the plate. And yep. a very good count now for Cole to do some damage. Yep, good hitters count. Left handed batters have given Gallardo trouble this year. Next pitch. And that's taken for a called strike. Gallardo has been an all star once in his career. At least 30 starts each of the last seven seasons, but that certainly is in jeopardy this year after he missed a lot of. Time here in the first half of the season and the next pitch and that one a little bit low and Cole Calhoun has a one out walk base runner for Mike Trout. And my Hyundai key for this game is to be successful. He might as well keep going with that offense. Little Joan Jett. I love rock and roll. 
Keep that offense rolling. Do some damage. Oh, you like that, don't you, Terry? Going back with Joan Jett. Joan Jett, she's a big Baltimore Oriole fan back in the day, especially the Memorial Stadium. Yeah. I remember her throwing out a first pitch or two over the years. Wow. Here's Trout digging in against Gallardo. And he takes the first pitch in there for a strike. See why the, the need to use that middle of the field, a lot of pitches away, whether it's a two seam fastball trying to run back. Or break the balls outside part of the plate. Albert waiting on deck for the Angels. The next pitch that's low. One ball, one strike, the count on Trout. And a big crowd here last night. Over 44,000. And it's starting to fill up here for this one as well. Crowd looks at one low outside. Two and one on Mike. Here's the next one on Trout, and that's high. So Gallardo is struggling with his control and. He came into the game with 19 walks in just over 38 innings. So that's yeah. a very high total for that number of innings. And 44 hits allowed, so a lot of base runners. Six home runs given up. Very good count right now for Trout to look to drive. 3 1, and he checks the swing there. Fouls that one back. It got back to the seats in a hurry right behind the Baltimore first base dugout. Child was kind of surprised by that late move, but he was looking away, and I think that's what Gallardo was trying to do, throw that one away, but it ran middle in on him upstairs. Got to believe that Cole Calhoun will be on the move here. So another full count. And a toss over to first base, and back to the bag goes Cole Calhoun. He's still in two this year. He had four last year. Gallardo has made 12 pitches so far in this first inning, and only five of them have been strikes. Trout waiting patiently in the box. We'll see what gives on the 3 2. There goes Calhoun. Pitches a call third strike, throw down a second, and Calhoun is out, and that's going to be a strike him out, throw him out, inning ending double play. Wow, they got a the break on that one, too. That looked like it was the ball out of the strike zone. Brown still questioning the home plate umpire. No score. We go to the bottom of the first. Today, as far as his numbers in the past against the Orioles, nothing to really tell you. First time he's ever faced them, it'll be matching up top of the batting order for the Orioles. Adam Jones in center will lead it off. 
He'll be followed by Kim in left field. Machado, the All Star third baseman. Trumbo, another All Star. He's the DH. Chris Davis at first base. Scope, Hardy, Rickert, and Joseph getting the start behind the plate as they give Matt Wieters an All Star the ball game off. Nick Tropiano going for the Angels and Mark. Today, his 12th start of the year with the Halos. Yeah, he's been very solid. When you look at that ERA 3.28 for Tropiano, but my go to is to be successful against this Baltimore lineup and use other pitches early. That means don't just fall into the first pitch fastball, especially against Adam Jones, and limit those base runners. They had some chances last night, Baltimore, but they just missed some of those pitches to drive out. So you got to make sure you limit those guys on base today. So here's Adam Jones, who's hitting 262. He hit the first pitch he saw last night for a home run to dead center field. Topiano is well aware of that. And here's one that's hit well down the left field side, tight to the line, but it is foul. That had home run distance as well, but just a long strike. And again, what we say about that little different pitch early, threw him a fastball first pitch, and he was ready once again. Again, when you see a club like this with their power, they want to hit a fastball. They don't want to be behind in the count. That means they got to deal with your secondary pitches. They're going to be aggressive early. Here's the next one, and Jones goes chasing that pitch. That was a good off-speed pitch. Good changeup, it looked like. And that's why they're aggressive first pitch, thinking getting fastball. Then they have to deal with a secondary pitch like that from Tropiano. So he's way in front here on Adam Jones. 0-2. And that one is waved at and this struck him out on three pitches. And the defense behind Tropiano today, Daniel Nava made an unbelievable play last night. Like Crop center, Cole Calhoun in right. Nell Escobar at third, Anderson Simmons at short, John Givitella at second, G Man Choi at first, Jeff Bandy catching. G Man Choi getting that third start at first base is recalled from Salt Lake City today in the town right away. Playing that first base position. Pretty solid defender at first base. Angels have a three man shift on that right side, and that one's a little bit low. And Troy, along with Marte, I guess, will be seeing a lot of first base action for the Angels now due to the injury to CJ Crone. Here's the next one on Kim, and that one bounces in. It lands over by Machado yeah, waiting on deck. The timing of that, too. CJ Crone had been swinging the bat so well. 19 RBI in his last 11 games, but with that fracture in his hand, he'll be out for some time now. It's really difficult to see the lineup here with the Angels and not have CJ Cronin at this moment. Here's the next pitch, and that's right in there for a strike. Hun Su Kim, the batter, left handed hitter from South Korea. The next pitch, he shows signs of running that one and ends up taking it and it missed. And we saw that at, at an odd time yesterday for Kim the Bump. But when you're at a hitter's count of 2 1 count, I, I can understand trying to bunt early in counts, but when you're at a fastball count to do some damage, that's not, doesn't seem to be for me the time to think about a bunt. Here's the next pitch, and that's taken for a called strike. Angels have on the gray tops and bottoms, the Orioles, the orange tops, white pants. Full count here on Kim. Tropiano's delivery, and that one missed outside. Walks him. Going back to last night, we talked about C.J. Crone. Right throws a fastball in and gets C.J. Crone right on top of that left hand. Very difficult to take, especially when you're swinging the bat as well. Then you can see right away the mark on his hand, fractured hand, and he's going to be out. Estimates about four to six weeks. But you can see the frustration anytime when you're swinging the bat like he he was, and how big he's been for the team as far as the offense. Difficult to see that. Plus, real good guys worked hard. He was hit twice in last night's ball game. That. Second one, though, uh, was the one that really did the damage. Very unfortunate. At the plate is Manny Machado. And he missed.
This is the first pitch from Trubiano. Machado, an all star, a couple of hits last night's opener, 323 average, and that places him sixth in the league in batting. Top 10 in home runs in the AL of 19. Infield is backed up. Choi holding the bag at first and the pitch. Machado checks that he go around on that no on the appeal. The umpire Tim Timmons at first base says he was holding. Another very warm day here in Baltimore. Humid day. And we have bright sunshine as the action is underway here in the bottom of the first inning. Pitch low, good block on that one by Jet Bandy. And Bandy's a guy that has to feel pretty good today. Yeah, there's no doubt in that. I mean, to think how hard he's his work to make sure he's got the confidence in Mike Sosha to be able to put him out there on a pretty consistent basis and to stay at the major league level. Thousand Oaks High School product. Giovanni Soto rejoining the Angels today. He's on the active roster. Carlos Perez option to AAA Salt Lake. Mike Sosha was saying. Earlier today, Soto will catch tomorrow's game, and there's a cut and a miss by Matty Machado. And when you look at the breaker ball that Tropiano throws, that looks like a slider and a curveball, but he basically what he does, he changes speeds with his curveball. One's a little bit harder, a little bit different type of break, but he does have a very good curveball to go along with the changeup and split finger fastball. So a 2 2 count on Machado. Toss over to first base and diving back goes Kim. He's only stolen one base this year. Baltimore is not a base stealing team. Tropiano with four pickoffs this year. Never had one at the big league level until this year. Four of them this year. Next delivery that's off speed and low. So he's worked a full count here on Manny Machado. And the breakdown on Tropiano right now 50 50 balls and strikes out of the 14 pitches. Threw a lot of pitches in five innings of work last time, not 95 of them. Here's the 3 2 runner goes, and the pitch is a cold third strike throw to second out there, and the inning is over. How so, often does that happen? Both innings end with a strike him out, throw him out. There you go. So he's kind of replicated right there in the first inning. We go to the second. There's no score. Angels and Orioles on Fox Sports West.
for the Angels is Albert Pujols as we go to the second. Albert had a hit last night, drove in a run. And the first pitch, that one taken for a called strike. Yeah, it's nice to see CJ Crone there in the dugout. Obviously, he'd love to be playing today, but watching and rooting his teammates on with his hand wrapped there, fractured. A low on Albert. One to one to count. Hey, Albert with some real good numbers against Gayarda. Four career home runs, 30 at bats. And the next pitch he grounds this one sharply, but it's on the left side. It's stopped by Machado and it throws right on the money to Davis. What a way. Now it's time for our tools of the trade brought to you by Ram Trucks with Daniel Nava coming to the plate. But what he did in the field last night was outstanding against Manny Machado, who thought he had tied the game up in the first with a home run. But Nava brings it back with an outstanding defensive play. Over the wall. Saving a run. Great play by Daniel Nava. And speaking of Nava, he gets set to bat. A couple of RBIs for him last night. He had one hit. Angels switch hitter batting from the left side and takes that one for strike one. Nava is certainly familiar with the. AL East and the Orioles right now are leading that division. Nava played for two different teams in this division last year. The Red Sox and the Rays takes that one low. Career 283 hitter against the Orioles. He had a chance to play against those former clubs of his on this road trip. Kind of hard to keep track of this trip. It's yeah. been long. <laughs> And the next delivery that's in there for called strike. That's right. We were in Boston on this trip, right? <laughs> yeah, I think it was last weekend. <laughs> yes. This is game nine of a 10 game road trip that will take the Angels into the All Star break. And so far, so good. The Angels, five and three on the trip. That's the record for the Angels right now here in the month of July. And the pitch, and that one misses high. A week ago today is the 21 run effort by the offense. 22 hits. I'll take half of that today. Yes. And feel pretty good about yes. it. 2 2 pitch. That's high. And Gallardo continues to struggle with his command here. He's not willing to challenge the middle part of the plate. Doesn't quite have the velocity on the fastball like he did when he first came up. 3 2. It's ball four. A little bit of a delayed call right there. Nava has a one out walk, so that's pretty much how things started last inning for the Angels. An out and then a walk, and that's happened here in the second. And G Man Choi, who is back with the Angels. He was hitting 329 at Triple A Salt Lake, four homers, 27 RBIs with the Angels in his, well, roughly a month with the Angels to start the season. He had only 18 at bats in just one hit. So he's hitting 056. And here's the pitch. And he takes that one high. And when he was with the Angels that first month, Mark, he just wasn't getting any consistent playing time. Now when he and he was trying to pull pitches away and, and the pitchers obviously their scouting report was to try to stay away against him. And then once he started looking away then they started that fastball in and he really struggled like that one there fastball in because he was looking away. And it's a game of adjustments whether you're in triple A or the major league level as a hitter. But the best way to get pitchers away from pitching inside like that is to start go inside out and hit the ball the other way. Here's the next pitch on Choi. That one's up and in. Remember in spring training, we saw him drive the ball very well the other way. And then he, start, he tried to throw some break balls, and he still had the power to turn on the ball inside. Two and one to count. Choi had asked for time from the home plate umpire, Jordan Baker.
Next one on G man that's way high the catcher Joseph had a reach the glove high in the air just to catch that one. So it's three and one. And more pitches out of the strike zone than in the strike zone so far for Giarda. So a good hitters count for Choi and the pitch and he takes that one and that one misses high another walk. So Gallardo has faced six batters and he's walked three of them and the Angels have a pair on here without a hit and now we'll see what Johnny Giavitella can do. And the, the strike that was called on Trout was a borderline ball itself so he had the potential of having four walks already in this game in this ballpark a warm day like this that's not a. A good for him to be successful and right now Joe's going to go out and talk to him. Because the more runners you put on base in this yard and all of a sudden one good swing against you you're down three nothing. Mentioned he's walked three already out of the first six that he's faced he had. Three walks in his last start. He went four innings in that start. And that was on the 4th of July against the Dodgers. At Dodger Stadium and he didn't figure in the decision in the ball game. That was a game the. Dodgers beat the Orioles 7 5. And you see 27 pitches, 16 out of the strike zone. So here's the pitch on Gia Vitello. That one's in there. Gallardo's had some trouble with the home run ball. He gave up two in his last start. And he's allowed homers in each of his last five starts. Gia Vitello, 273 average, one hit last night in the opener. Here's the next one on Johnny. He takes it for a ball. And you mentioned those home runs. He's given up six and coming in the game of 30 and two thirds. That's almost one every six innings, which is a high total, especially when you're a guy that's walking batters also. And again, looking for that big early swing here for the Angels and Johnny Giavitello with a perfect opportunity now. Next pitch. He lifts this one in the air into center field, but backpedaling under and waiting is Jones. Nava is going to tag, and he will easily move to third. It was deep enough to get him over, so the fly out to straightaway center. Second out, and we'll see what Jet Bandy can do. Trying to keep the inning alive and get someone home. Good decision by Nava to tag up, especially with a pitcher with his having control issues early on. Gallardo with three wild pitches this season already. It's been wild out of the strike zone. So that put a little bit more pressure when you're at third base. The more apt to get more fastballs as a hitter at the plate. So Bandy getting ready to bat. First time he's ever faced Gallardo. And here's the pitch. It's popped in the air foul over on the first base side. It's going to get back behind the Orioles dugout out of play. That bandy a little three game hitting streak entering the day. Drove in a run in last night's game. See that batting average of his so far with the Angels 279. Here's the pitch. And he takes that one a little up and in. Well, when you have a, a pitcher like Gallardo so far today, and he's having the location problems, you like to cash in against him. Yeah, before he settles in, and he's he's been a good pitcher throughout his career. He'll make adjustments. So as a hitter right now, you got to make sure you get to him at the point where you score some runs before he settles in. Next pitch that's outside. Gallardo has won over a hundred games in his big league career. He's 30 years old. 105 wins lifetime. And even though a lot of his numbers so far this season are not good, ERA over six, high walks, innings pitched, he still has a three and one record. So he's usually been getting some pretty good run support. Here's the next one, and it's grounded right to the shortstop, handled there by Harding. He'll flip to second. And an easy out on Choi on the fielder's choice. The inning is over. We go to the bottom of the second, no score.
Matters. Join us for Family Sunday, presented by Yakult Probiotic Drink. On Sunday, July the 17th, the Angels will take on the Chicago White Sox. Game time at the Big A at 1235. Visit the Gate 5 Courtyard for fun activities. And after the game, kids in attendance get to run the bases. Visit angels.com slash promotions to purchase your tickets today. Quite a few Angel fans here at Camp Yards. Even one with a Angel jersey with a Philadelphia Philly hat on there for you, Terry. Wow. Covering all bases. Yes, indeed. Not too far of a drive down from Philly down here to Baltimore. Always nice to see some fans from the Delaware Valley. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Here's the pitch. And that one a little bit outside. Leading things off for the Orioles is Mark Trumbo, an all star this year. Had two hits, including a homer, drove in three last night. But that came about in a losing cause. Next pitch, Trumbo takes inside. This could be an interesting at bat for Trumbo with Jordan Baker behind the plate. Remember on the check swing, Baker called. Hit a strike against Trumbo. He wasn't real happy. Gave him a glare down there at first base in the ninth inning. Trumbo looks that one over and it's on the outside corner for a called strike. Trumbo already has hit more homers and driven in more runs than he did all of last year. And he played for two teams last year. He was with the D-backs and the Mariners a season ago. And right now Trumbo has the best at bat to home run ratio in baseball right now. 12.63 at bats. Per home run hit in the major leagues for Trumbo. That's number one in the game. Guy right behind him can hit some home runs as well. And here's the next one on Trumbo. And that ball is hit well in the dead center field. Going back is Trout. It is gone. Back to back ball games. Trumbo has homered for Baltimore. They lead it 1 nothing. Pretty much down the heart of the plate. Trumbo put himself in a good count to do some damage. And you always got to hold your breath. Anything hit towards that center field, the right center field with Trout out in the outfield. You see that location right down the heart of the plate. He is very, very good. Trumbo is on pitches on the inside part of the plate. He hits that one out in center field. As Trout got back to the wall, but just too far to not make that effort to try to get over the wall to bring it back. Here's Chris Davis, another home run hitter, and he takes that one low. He led the majors in home runs a year ago, 47. Hit 53 of them back in the 2013 season. That's an Orioles franchise record. Slug 21 already this year, and he takes that one for a called strike. It's the 11th home run the Trope has allowed in 61 in the third innings pitch this year. Prior to this year, though, he was a guy that very rarely gave up a home run. Well, just two last year. Limited action with the Angels. Under 38 innings. That pitch taken for a ball, so it's two and one on Chris Davis with Jonathan Stoke waiting on deck. The Orioles hit three homers last night, but the Angels beat them. Baltimore, the top home run hitting team in baseball, 135 already this year. Here's a little one handed swing and it's lifted into shallow left playing very deep was not but he's not going to get to it. That ball was in the air for a long time but Nava was playing so deep that he had a rush in and never quite reached it so it's a bloop single and scope the next batter. Yeah, it almost looked like he got fooled on the swing and because see going back and then making that cut in to try to get to that baseball because Davis has a number of opposite field home runs five of them as a matter of fact with that swing he generally would drive the ball well but the angle he took coming in allowed that baseball to fall in. So blue pit and now scope will be the next batter. Going back to that swing and location of the pitch to Mark Trumbo. Tropiano put himself into a fastball count and this runs 
middle middle in and Trumbo was able to get his foot down and you talk about barreling up on a baseball with that power he has very difficult to keep that in the yard. That was right in the wheelhouse right there and Trumbo made him pay. Piano from the stretch. First pitch. Strike on the outside part of the plate. Scope has a seven game hitting streak. He's got his average over 300. And we see the numbers for Scope, and they're good numbers for a second baseman. Trying to pace the hit. Over 25 home runs this year. And we're talking about a solid batting average he has against breaking pitches, also. Very quick on a fastball, but 341. Versus breaker balls, you're going to get a lot of breaker balls from Nick Tropiano, whether it's his curveball or a little cutter he'll throw. He's one taken outside. One ball, one strike. Neither team scored in the first inning, but the Orioles have gotten a second inning run. J.J. Hardy who hit ninth for them and the opener is waiting on deck. They moved him up a couple spots and Scope lays off the next delivery. Think about Tropiano this year with the Angels. Although a lot of the numbers are good. ERA solid. He has a winning record. He has not given the Angels a whole lot of length in his starts. And so that's. What you want from a starting pitcher to pitch deeper in the games. Ball hit foul down the right side, way back and out of play. Tropiano went five innings on the 4th of July. That was uh, Monday at Tampa Bay. Start before that with the Angels five innings. He had a couple pretty good stretches there. He went seven innings against the Dodgers, followed up by six and two thirds. Against the Rangers at Texas, but you're right, Terry. He needs to find a way to be able to get some quicker outs and not having these dip deep pitch counts in each batter. And there's a pitch that's waved out and missed, and down on strikes goes Scope. He fooled him right there. It's good off-speed pitch once again. He will throw a split finger fastball on occasion, also. For that percentage of pitches thrown for Tropiano. 51% fastballs, 24% curveballs, 19 changeups, and 6% split finger fastballs. There's Hardy at the plate. And the first one on the right handed batter, that's low. Hardy had back to back errors last night. Never happened uh, in his major league career. In a gold glover that had an off night with a glove last night. Next pitch, he swings at that one and fouls it off on the right side out of play. And for him, they they were pretty routine plays for him that he was unable to field twice last night in a row. A very consistent shortstop. Five times in his career, Hardy has had over 20 home runs in a season. But he hasn't done it the past two seasons, and so far this year, and he has been injured a lot. He's had only two home runs. He misses that one, a good off speed pitch right there. So it's one and two on him. But he had a stretch. Three year period uh, going back just a few seasons ago, where he had the most home runs at his position than any player during that stretch. We look at 177 career home runs. Yeah. There's one low. Good block on that one by Jet Bandy. He's really done a nice job, Jet, behind the plate. That, that's a very difficult pitch to block. It's a breaking ball in the dirt. See how he's able to get his body over, keep the glove down, and keep it in front. Obviously, we'd love to catch it, but your goal as a catcher is to keep that ball from going too far away from you and keeping that runner at first base to keep a double play in order. 
Well done by Jet Bandy. Yeah, he's a big man, 6'4, goes just under 240 pounds. Uh, good mobility behind the plate. Here's the next pitch on Hardy, and he is out looking. Right, uh, felt it was low. He takes that fastball, struck him out. Well, Terry, you mentioned earlier that Jordan Baker is a strike caller as a home plate umpire. Well, Tropiano got the benefit of that call. That's a that's about a half a baseball, a full baseball off the inside corner, and he got the call. Great well by Bandy. Not a lot of movement in his catcher's mitt, but still, as a hitter, you better be swinging here today. Yeah. So that is strikeout number four already for Tropiano. His single game high is 11, and he did that last year in a. Start last September against Oakland. There's one that's low and outside. This is Joey Rickard. When we saw the Orioles at the Big A back in May, he was their leadoff man. 268 batting average for him. 25 years old. He's got pretty good speed too. He's got four stolen bases and five attempts, so he can run well out of the batter's box if he hits the ball on the ground. Here's a pitch on Rickert. It's taken for a strike. He was a Rule 5 draftee last December from Tampa Bay. Ended up making the Orioles opening day roster. And then he got off to a very good start. He had hits in 13 of his first 14 big league games. So that's why he was in the lineup first couple of months. There's a bunt and he drops it down in front of the plate fielded there by Tropiano fires to Choi and they get Rickard on the bunt to end the inning the leadoff home run in the inning one nothing Baltimore we go to the third. As we start the third inning here from Camden Yards, Angels will have Simmons in the top of the order, Escobar and Calhoun against Gallardo, who has had some control issues first couple of innings, three walks, but it's not hurt him. And here's Simmons, who's hitting 262, swinging at the first pitch, fouling it back behind the plate. During the half inning break, we saw Buck Showalter come out and have a Conversation with the home plate umpire Jordan Baker. I'm sure he's saying, "Hey, that strike zone is pretty good so far for the pitcher." Here's the next one on Simmons. A little bit low for a ball. Simmons is four for four in his career versus Gallardo with a home run. Here's the next pitch. That's right in there. He kind of moved off the plate thinking it was going to be inside, but it's a strike one and two. Yeah, that's a little bit off that inside corner, also. Well, again, you're at the plate today. 
think in terms of being a little more aggressive than normal. The next pitch, and that's way low and outside. That's the thing. It's odd that Gallardo was have, would have three walks with a strike zone right. like this. You're, <laughs> you got to be well off the plate. <laughs> Simmons taking that one and he is out looking. Boy, another batter called out on strikes, and we've had a few of them here in the early going. Again, when you look at our Fox tracks, it's a little bit off the inside corner. Again, that part of the plate has been called a lot already. It's a cut fastball and indoor cutter. Trying to freeze a right handed batter and bring it back in the inside corner. A little bit off the inside corner, but call the strike. So the second strikeout for Gallardo. Tropiano has already had four. And now Escobar bats. And he goes after the first pitch and lifts it high in the air into shallow left field. Going back is the shortstop Hardy. And he'll make the catch in front of the left fielder, Hunsu Kim. So that's the second out. I want to remind you to stay tuned later today in the postgame show for the business of sports. It's brought to you by AutoNation.com and powered by. Auto Nation Ford Tustin. Couple of pop ups so far in this game for Escobar. One to third, one to short. Cole Calhoun, the batter, he has one of the walks that Gallardo has issued. And he takes that one high, first pitch fastball. Orioles, even though they lead the AL East, but it's just a one game lead on Toronto entering the day. They've been struggling, Baltimore. Just two wins their last eight. That's in there for a called strike. But they have been good at home. 31 and 14 is their record here at Camden Yards. 31 home wins. It's the most by any team in the majors this year. The pitch that's chopped foul over on the right side. We have a shift on Cole Calhoun. Three infielders on the right side. Scope the second baseman. He's back on that outfield grass, maybe 15, 20 feet back out there. Very good numbers hitting on the road. 335 for Cole Calhoun. Hits this one sharply, and that ball uh, skips off of Hardy over to Stoke, and he gets the throw to first and nips Cole Calhoun. I think Mike Sosa might take a look at this. Show him to hold up for a second, just look in, and get word from Steve Solis in the clubhouse if it's worth challenging, especially when you have Trout potentially coming up with a runner on here. This is a good play by Scope to be able to react like this with the bare hand and a pretty quick throw. Be able to get him at first. Angels will not challenge the call. We go to the bottom of the third. One nothing Baltimore.
both sides. It's our AT&T high speed replay. The old strike him out, throw him out at the top of the first. Not to be outdone. The Angels strike him out, throw him out to finish off the bottom of the first. You always say a double play is a pitcher's best friend. That's a real good friend right there. You get a punch out and a double play. Yeah. So here is Joseph getting ready to bet. He's catching today for Baltimore. They give Weeders a day off. He'll probably be back in there for them tomorrow in the day game to wrap up this weekend set. First pitch that's in there for a strike. Caleb Joseph hitting only 164. He saw some extended action a year ago when Weeders was sidelined. And the next pitch, he waves and misses that. Good off speed pitch. That's why it was a little bit odd for Ricker to, to lay down a bunt in that last inning, especially when you have your number nine hitter up and Joseph struggling swinging the bat this year. Two strike pitch. That's high and away. Fastball misses from Tropiano. Tropiano has actually pitched a little better on the road than at the Big A this season. Here's his next pitch, and that one is waved at and missed, and he fooled him off speed, struck him out, went away. Another good curveball from Tropiano. Stay back of the well, the front shoulder stays in there very well. A good break to that curveball to get a swing and miss. So he's been through the batting order once, and he has five strikeouts against the first nine. Wait, wouldn't you think he's going to throw something all speed here first pitch against Jones you, you would say that would be a smart thing to do. But not that get over break of all one with conviction. Jones is aggressive. 12 home runs in his last 34 games. Tropiano ready here comes that first pitch and it's a little. Flair in the right field for a base hit. He gave him a fastball there, and he didn't hit it very hard, but drops it in for a one-out single. But the bottom line, he put it in play because it's a fastball. That's what he's hitting right now. Fastball down and in, stay back in the well, inside out, swing on that one from Jones. I don't know why he would give no. him a fastball. So the batter now is Kim Hunsu Kim. He walked his first time up. Came in 331 batting average. He hasn't been a regular all season for them. There's a pitch low. It skips away from Bandy and moving up to the second without a throw will be Adam Jones. Scored a wild pitch. Look like that could have been a split finger fastball there. Tropiano in the dirt spins away from Jet Bandy, who's done such a good job as far as keeping all those pitches in front of him. So Kim bats with the runner in scoring position. One out in the inning. Tropiano looks at Jones, the runner, and delivers the pitch. That's a little bit low. Mentioning Kim. This is game 86 for Baltimore, and Kim is playing in his 45th game for him, so he's played a little over half the games, but lately he's been playing a lot, and that's because he's been hitting it. Average, as I mentioned, at 331 right now for the South Korean. Next delivery takes that one outside. That's one thing with Nick Tropiano. I talked to Charles Nagy about certain counts, certain hitters. Threw him a 2 0 change up there, knowing who's on deck. You were more apt to be more aggressive with a fastball 2 0 to Kim than you would be Machado. You'd like to see him at times be a little bit more aggressive, trusting his fastball against certain hitters. 2 1 pitch missed on Kim, so. He's worked a 3 1 count. Good 
Here's the next one. And it's lifted foul down the left side. Well, the Angels, uh, I guess it was what, Thursday night, got some good news on Tyler Skaggs as he went uh, five innings in a start for Triple-A Salt Lake. He gave up only one run, didn't walk any. Got a little bit tired. He threw 73 pitches in that game. 45 were strikes, 28 out of the strike zone, but things are moving in the right direction for him right yeah, now. I think he's real close. Maybe a start or two more down in Triple-A, and you're going to see him at the Major League level. Yeah, unless there's some kind of speed bump here in July, we should certainly see him soon. And it'll be uh, nice to see him compete at the Major League level again. Here's the pitch. This is chopped on the right side, fielded by Giovatella. His throw will easily get Kim, and on the play, Jones will move over to third. And that'll be the second out. Manny Machado will be the batter. Angel fans, don't forget, every fan matters when the Angels take on the Texas Rangers. That'll be on Wednesday night, July the 20th, 7.05 at the Big A. Fans in attendance will receive a Mike Trout pocket T-shirt. It's courtesy of Old Dominion Household Services. While supplies last, you can visit angels.com slash promotions to purchase your tickets today. Sir, I could see you walking around town with that T-shirt on. The pocket T-shirt. Yeah. Anything pocket. with a trout on it, uh, you'll get good feedback, I'm sure. There's one a little bit low. You know, just mentioning Skaggs, Mark. Mike Sosha was asked earlier today what he felt has been the most disappointing part of the first half of the season for the Angels. And there's one low. Of course, you know, when a, a manager starts to do that, he can always get himself in trouble a little bit. But I think he thought it over and he, he made a good point. He said for him, the most disappointing thing in the first half was not being able to see the development of Skaggs, of Richards, and of Heaney this yeah, year. Yeah, and that's got to be difficult. Those three, if they're part of your rotation, you have a chance every single night. Not only they're young, but excellent fastballs. Movement on the fastballs, but very good secondary pitches also. And in the case of Heaney and, and certainly Skagg, still very highly projectable guys. Richards has accomplished some things already, but you still think there's a little more ceiling to him as well. But not to see them this year been tough. Here's a high drive lifted foul down the left side. It's going to get back to the seats and out of play off the bat of Manny Machado. And the one thing I'm looking forward to with Tyler Skaggs, he's made an adjustment in his mechanics. He used to bring his glove over his head and his follow through delivery to play from the full lineup. He's kind of condensed that a little bit to take a little bit of strain off his elbow and shoulder, but his mechanics will be good and, and has not lost anything off his velocity of his fastball. Here's the next delivery chopped right to short gobbled up by Simmons his throw over to first base is in time and the inning is over. So they leave a runner at third and we've completed three we head to the fourth in Baltimore one nothing Orioles.
brought to you by Coors Banquet. Truck coming to play back in this day, 2000. Garrett Anderson, GA, broke the Angels record for most home runs before the All-Star break with 26. Mike Trout and Albert Pools both tied that mark last year with 26 home runs apiece. Mentioning GA, I'm excited. The event coming up next month at the Big A. Yeah, he's. I'll tell you what, he is so he was such a smooth player, great teammate. I, I love being around him, and boy, could he drive in some runs. Well deserved honor. He'll be entering the Angels Hall of Fame. So Mike Trout ready to get things going for the Angels as we head to the fourth inning. Pitch a little bit low on him. Trout struck out his first time up. And it ended up being an inning ending double play when Cole Calhoun was thrown out trying to advance the second. Here's the next pitch and a big cut and a miss. They had teammates last year with Trout and Poles both with 26 home runs apiece before the All-Star break. Maris Mantle did it in 61. Mo Vonick and Seiko back in 96. Griffey and Arod back in 98 as far as teammates with 26 at the All-Star break apiece. Two and one now, Mike Trout. Left side shift on, and the pitch. He checks on that one, and the umpire at first, Tim Timmons, says he's holding. Three and one. I'm starting to see a little shadow action coming into play now. Sun going over with the bank of lights. Four o'clock start, like it is here. Advantage pitcher. Trout skies one into very shallow right center. Let's see who's going to take charge. Both outfielders go after it. And the catch is made by Adam Jones. He and Joey Rickard are side by side. And then when you talk to hitters after they play a game at this time, it's just that split second they don't see the ball and react quick enough because that's a pretty good pitch to drive. And the veteran Gold Glover out in center field takes control and takes that fly ball out. But you're just, Trout just missed that ball right there. Whether it's the shadows coming into play where he just didn't react as quick as normal, but it's certainly more difficult for a hitter at this time. First pitch on Pujols takes it low and in. Robert grounded out to Manny Machado his first time up. That was leading off the second. Even though the Angels have had some base runners, they have yet to get a hit against Gallardo. That one is taken and it skips past the catcher Joseph back to the batter waiting on deck, Daniel Nava. And the Angels have been doing a lot of damage lately on offense. In fact, the last four games, the Angels had scored 34 runs, but Gallardo is. Quieted down. The Angels have been effectively wild so far during this game. And there's one foul back to the club level out of play. And sometimes, as a hitter, Terry, you get a little bit more aggressive than normal. Then you start expanding your strike zone and helping out the pitcher. And the shift on Albert on the left side, but the three infielders there, and he takes that one, and that pitch missed. Another 3 1 count. A lot of those. In this game, it's a pretty good pitch though by him. More like it should be two and two at this point. Could have been a low strike. It went to Albert, and here's the three-one, and that one is a foul strike. Albert reacting like he thought he had a walk. Yeah, that's got the lower part of the strike zone, a slider. Framed very well by Caleb Joseph behind the plate. Backs out. Nava's waiting on deck, and of course the the five hole right behind Albert had been occupied a lot of late by C.J. Chrome, but that is not an option right now. Here's the pitch. Albert lifts one in the air, shallow left field, playing deep. Who's Kim? He has to come in. He's not going to be able to get to it. It's going to fall in. The Angels' first hit of the day, a bloop single into left field. That looked like one of your pitching wedges back at Walnut Lane back in Philadelphia, Terry Smith. <laughs> yes, indeed. Off the end of the bat, placed perfectly in the outfield. 
again, when you have a strong hitter as an outfitter, that first quick step, it has to be going forward, not back. And that's what got Kim on that one from Albert Pujols. Daniel Nava will be the next batter. And here's the pitch and that one skips right between the legs of the catcher Joseph and it goes back to the backstop so Albert can just pretty much walk up to second base on the wild pitch and he represents the tying run there. Well cut fastball they didn't quite get the body over anticipating that ball being in the dirt potentially. Joseph has reached for it a lot of times on a cut fastball. You have to try to move your body, anticipate that ball has a chance at being in the dirt. Yeah, a little slow with the reaction on that one. But an opportunity right now here for Nava to tie the game up with a base hit. He drove in a pair last night and he fouls that one off on the left side, backing out of play. Nava batting from the left side. And the pitch, he fouls that one off. Nava has had only one at bat so far this season against a left handed pitcher. In other words, he's only batted right handed one time, and he's one for one. And for the longest time, we'd be going from Stadium to stadium in the first half, and people would be asking us, is he still switch hitting? He's trying to keep that batting average at perfect 1,000. Right. But the answer is he he still switch hitting, but Mike Sosha hasn't been using hit him to start games against lefty starters. There's a pitch that's outside on him. Two and two. All three outfielders for the Orioles playing pretty shallow. Yeah, they've really moved in, and here's the next pitch. He takes that one high. The reason why that's important when you get out for poles is important for him to get a bigger secondary lead to score on a single into the outfield when they're playing the shallow. And the infielders really paying attention to Albert, trying to drift out. Now Hardy's getting a little bit closer to him. And Albert has said, hey, will you go, 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 go back there? So a full count here on Nava. The next one, he swings and pops it in the air. This is in shallow left center field, coming in, making the catch, the left fielder Kim. And then he fires back to second. Albert got back. Well, they were playing shallow, as Mark mentioned, and that allowed Kim to make the catch on that one. That's the second out. Yeah, and I, I think that's one of those pitches, too, when. Daniel Nava's feeling real comfortable with the plate. He can drop the barrel of the bat. He got underneath on that swing. It was on the inner half of the plate. The pitch he can drive. He just got underneath and popped it up to left. Didn't quite get the barrel of the bat out there quick enough to do some damage. So here's G Man Choi, who walked his first time up. Just back with the Angels. Choi had been gone for. Well, nearly two months. This is the first pitch here. 0 and 1 to count. Pretty good on base percentage down there. Triple A 411. Next pitch, and he checked the swing on that one. Fouls it back to the screen. Yeah, we're seeing that same pattern with pitchers are pitching him inside, up and in. Yet to have a big league RBI, just one major league hit, 18 times up. Here's the two strike pitch that's high. Fastball missed. Those shadows coming in from behind are nearing the batter's circle now. The 
Gallardo ready, and the next one on Choi. It's up and in. Still trying to go fastball up and in on him. So Choi in the shadow, then you have Gallardo in the sun. Already 65 pitches thrown by Gallardo, and he is working with the slim 1 0 lead. Here's the next pitch. This is lined into right field. Chasing is Rickard, and he reaches up and makes a nice running catch. And then him took him near the rim of the track out there in right. Angels threatened but failed to score. Bottom of the fourth is next. One nothing Baltimore. This telecast of Angels Baseball on Fox Sports West is brought to you by Subaru, making the world a better place. That's why they created Subaru Loves to Care, Subaru's commitment to a healthier community. By El Pollo Loco, try the new fire-grilled chicken burritos today. And by your Southern California Toyota dealers. Bottom of the fourth here. See the warehouse behind the right field area, Camden Yards. Who pal still have his barbecue spot out yes, there? Yes, he does. Yeah. He was honored part of that 1966 club here last night. Mark Trumbo at the plate. Tropiano's first pitch to him, and that one is in there. 0 and 1. Well, Trumbo led off the bottom of the second inning with a homer. He leads off the bottom of the fourth. His home run, the only run on the board. Takes that one for a called strike, a fastball. That's a real good spot. Trumbo's numbers against inside pitch is very good. Outside pitch is not as much. He's getting 365 on the inside part of the plate. You want to stay away and stay down. Takes that one low. One and two on Trumbo. Trumbo growing up, big Angels fan and a big Tim Salmon fan. Here's the next pitch. He waves and misses that one. Fooled him off speed. Got him. Strikeout number six for Tropiano. And now it's time for the driver's seat brought to you by Kia with Chris Davis coming to the plate. As far as most home runs since 2012, Chris Davis at the top with 180. And when Inconacion 174, Nelson Cruz. 158. Mike Trout, 152 home runs since 2012. Davis has a single today. Angels have the three man right side infield going against him. And the first pitch that missed. A 
cut and a miss. Good, Good breaking ball there. Yeah, great location that one too. With that home run by Trumbo back in the second, that's 135 home runs as a team for Baltimore. That's a record for home runs by their team before the All-Star game. And again, sometimes it's a different time of the year when the All-Star break comes about. Yep. But still, they can hit the ball out of the ballpark pretty consistently. Been a handful of games probably uh, over the years. How many you play before the All-Star game? Next pitch that's grounded foul over on the right side. Well, we talked about their power with three home runs last night, but the Angels scored four runs on outs in the game last night. Two sack flies, two ground ball outs. And we've seen that quite a bit on this road trip. Angels finding ways to get runners in. Here's the next one on Davis. And that one is low. It's going to be interesting, Mark, to see what happens, especially coming out of the All Star break. How do the Angels fill the void of CJ Crone's bat? Because that bat was really coming on. Yeah, you're talking 19 RBI in the last 11 games. That's great protection behind Trout and Pujols. And there's a cut and a miss. And down on strikes goes Davis. So he leads the American League in striking out. And that's the second strikeout in the inning and number seven for Tropiano. Yeah, seven different batters swing and miss in this game. Nick Tropiano including that fastball by a very good fastball hitter, Chris Davis. Scope is the batter. And he's a right handed hitter. He takes that one low and away. Tropiano season high as far as strikeouts 10. On May 8th. That's the Tampa Bay Rays in five and a third innings pitch. Pitch a little bit low for a ball. Angels today with two new players on the roster. Choi, who's playing, and also Soto, who came up from Triple A as well. He was on injury rehab. And those moves made with the injury to CJ Crone, the fractured left hand. Carlos Perez also option to Triple A Salt Lake. Mike Sosha was saying we need Carlos Perez to be playing every day. And so that's one of the uh, Factors into him going back down there with Soto up. And Perez stayed, then probably been splitting a lot of the playing time. Here's one that's grounded deep in the hole. It's short, long throw by Simmons, but it's right on the money. Scope and the Orioles are set down very quietly here in the fourth. The fifth inning is next. Angels down 1 0.
Mark your calendars for this coming Thursday as Fox Sports West offers 12 continuous hours of Angels programming starting at 11 o'clock in the morning from the freeway series to Tim Lincecum's Angels debut to Jared Weaver's Father's Day dominance. Relive some of the best Angel moments from the first half of the season. Be sure to tune in and check it out. I know you will be Terry checking that one out. I sure will. Baseball doesn't stop for us. No. Kubi, just because we're in the All Star break. Never. At the plate is Johnny Giovatella, and he takes the first pitch. That one in there, nothing and one to count. Yeah, the odd things for Gallardo in this game, he's faced 16 batters. He's thrown the first pitch strike 11 times, yet, there's one more strike throw than one out of the strike zone in his 67 pitches. Giovatella looks that one over. And he looks over another called strike. Bottom third of the batting order. Left field not too deep, especially Jones, very shallow in center, and so is the right fielder, Rickert. There's one low. Giovatello, a tough guy to strike out. Second toughest hitter to strike out in the American League so far this year. And he chops this one fair, third base side, but right at Machado. His throw handled by the first baseman Davis. Throws a little bit low, but they get Giovatello. It's the first out. The shadows now have crept into the batter's circle. Even more difficult. Yep, pretty soon they'll be uh, covering home plate. Uh, hitter Bandy as he digs in, you can see the shadow right in front of him. The one thing, though, in the hitter's favors for the Angels, Garrett doesn't really possess a mid 90s fastball, so the adjustment time a little bit better. There's a pitch on Bandy, a big cut fouls that one back. Love the level. Nice play. Remember this old time at the stadium? Give that fan a contract. We used to hear that all the time here. <laughs> Here's the next pitch. It's hit well into left center field. That ball's in the gap in left center. It smacks off the wall. Bandy is headed for second. He better hurry. The throw. He's out. Adam Jones, a gold glover out there, guns down Bandy. Yeah, it's his fourth outfield assist. Looks like Mike Sosha wants to take a look at it. This play right here and throw is certainly worthy of a Carl's Cam replay. Hit very, very well by Bandy. One hops the wall, but right with the bare hand, got himself a good throwing position and a firm throw and a quick tag. Let's go at second. Look how he's able to start turning his body with the bare hand. He put himself in a very good throwing position in a one hop throw and a big time scoop. And the tag applied. It's real close. Boy, anytime you get an out after you make a mistake, you got to feel good on the mound. And that was really thrown very, very well by Adam Jones in center. Yeah, Bandy hit that ball hard, a one hopper off the wall in left center, but they throw him out. And the next batter up lines one into left. That's Simmons. He'll make a turn at first. He better look out. He'll head back to first base. And then a quick snap throw by Scope as he tried to get his old buddy over there, Simmons. Well, he knows Simmons does that as well as anybody in the game. He tried it against the man who does it the best. And then quickly throws over. Gets the foot back in, though. That's back to back really good swings, though, this inning against Gallardo. Now make that five for six for Simmons against him. So the Angels have had back to back hits in the inning, but one of those hits turned into an out, two outs. Runner at first, here's Escobar. 13 game hitting streak. That he's looking to extend. He's 0 for 2 today. He came into the game fourth in the American League with a batting average of 325. 
And so far in this game, he had seen two pitches and popped out twice. Took that one. Escobar's hitting streak, a career best. Two outs in the inning, the pitch a bit low. Angels had had only one hit in the first four innings. We've had two here in this inning. We have two outs with just the runner at first base. Toss over to first, diving back to the bag goes Simmons. Gallardo at 75 pitches so far. Here's the next one, and that's low and away. We've had the lights turned on since we got started. It's bright and sunny here. Next delivery on Escobar. Low. Blocked by the catcher, Caleb Joseph. Pretty good patience at this at bat for Escobar. A lot of pitches, a lot of breaker balls out of part of the plate and down. Even the strike he threw was on the outside corner. Escobar's had exactly 100 hits this season, 22 walks. Calhoun on deck. Love to get that RBI spot. There goes the runner, but there's a bouncer right back to Gallardo. The pitcher will throw out Escobar. An easy out will end the inning. Couple hits, but no runs for the Angels here in the fifth. We go to the bottom of the inning. One nothing Baltimore. By authority of the Los Angeles Angels and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Angels baseball. So here we go to the bottom of the fifth. Hardy, Rickert, and Joseph, the bottom third of the batting order against Tropiano. First pitch right in there. Good off speed pitch called strike. Hardy and the strikeout victim looking. That was back in the bottom of the second. Tropiano has struck out seven. And here's the next pitch. It's grounded on the third base side. It's called a fair ball by the third base umpire Mike Everett. Fielded by Nava down near the corner. Throws to second late. 
And that is a hustle double there for Hardy. Right, Mike Sosha, Sosha, he's running that already. Well, everyone from Bandy to Escobar to Tropiano all point and foul. Unless that hit the corner of this the part of the base, it looked like it was foul. Mike Soch has pointed a spot where he saw the baseball go by the base. Mike Everett, the third base umpire, is also the crew chief. And he and Mike Soch have a fairly heated discussion going on right near the third base bag. See this angle a little bit better. Again, while you can see some. Trump, but that's on the other side of the base. Yeah, they're not going to go to any replay on that. Umpires did not even kind of get together to discuss that call. So that's going to be a leadoff double for Hardy and. The Orioles have a little threat right out of the blocks here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Rickert will be the batter, and he very well could be bunting in this situation. Rickert's had one sack bunt this year. Angels are thinking bunt as Troy is in. And Escobar is a couple feet in and on the left side. Here's the pitch on Rickert. No sign of a bunt, and he misses that off speed pitch for strike one. Well, Baltimore doesn't do a whole lot of sacrifice bunting, just five sacrifice bunts this year. Rickard was. Running back in that second inning, and at the time we thought that was a little bit odd. Only Boston has bunted less for sacrifice bunt. Three. It's hard to believe you could have someone less than five. <laughs> Here's the next pitch. He shows signs of bunting there. That looked like he was bunting on his own, though. More a bunt for a hit. It certainly wasn't squaring around the bunt. Trying to bunt for a hit. It's not like he's fooling anybody because they're playing up at the corners. Yeah, if you're going to square, I mean, to go bunt here, you just square around and give yourself up to advance the runner. Here's the next pitch, and he cuts it down and fouls it right back behind the plate. And the reason why you thought maybe. He would bump when you're dealing with these shadows here. You're just trying to get a run or two across in the difficult time for a hitter to swing the bat and see the ball well. Shadows right now engulfing the entire batter circle and they're making their way out toward the mound. They haven't gotten out there yet. Copiano's next pitch. That one is fouled off on the third base side. So the count holding one and two. And Tropiano works here in the bottom of the fifth inning. He's at 73 pitches. With the Angels this season, the most in any game is 104. And that was well, almost two months ago. The game in Seattle on the 13th of May. Here's his next one and it's popped in the air on the right side. The first baseman Troy is over near the Orioles dugout but it's going to hop in there and then bounce back to the seats behind the dugout. It looks like Rickard's trying to let that baseball travel enough where he can at least hit a ground ball to the right side of the infield. Tropiano's doing a good job as far as throwing all speed. It's very difficult to keep your hands back long enough to do so.
Rickard a year ago when he was in the Rays organization strictly in the minors and he was in a ball double A and triple A last year. Now the catcher Jet Bandy wants to come out and have a word with him. Tropiano. These two have certainly worked in the past with teammates in triple A as well. Nine hole hitter the catcher Caleb Joseph waiting on deck. In a quiet game so far offensively. Orioles have four hits the Angels three. And they count two and two now on Rickert. Tomorrow when we wrap up this weekend set with the afternoon game Tim Lincecum against Chris Tillman and the next pitch it's popped in the air on the first base side of foul ball the first baseman Troy comes about two thirds of the way down toward home plate to make the catch. Well you like to see him be aggressive like that call for that baseball right away Tropiano was there Bandy was there but Choi called them all off and made a nice play on that pop up. So out number one. Caleb Joseph will be the next batter. Keep an eye on it, a potential pickoff at some point in this at bat for Tropiano with Hardy at second. Here's the pitch and a swing and a miss, off speed delivery. Angels do try a pick off. It's definitely going to be Gia Vitello on the receiving end. Simmons is playing deep in the hole. It's short. Gia Vitello not too far from the second base bag as Hardy leads off there. Next pitch. That's low, smothered by Bandy. I think you notice with Tropiani, he really does that. Fatic bringing that front shoulder back in and in the stretch position. The reason why he does that, that basically is a timing mechanism to make sure he keeps his front shoulder in as he delivers the baseball. Let's see it from the stretch position. He set delivers and a wave and a miss. And getting some of those swings with the off speed stuff. Night in the opener here in Baltimore. Angels won at 9 5. Here's the next pitch, and there's another wave and a miss. He struck him out. Second time he's gotten Joseph. Strikeout number eight for Tropiano. It's a good breaking ball once again, Tropiano. Keeps that front shoulder in well and throws that hard breaking ball down off the plate to get a swing and miss. I think you're seeing a quick conversation now with Bandy Tropiano to remind him that Adam Jones is at the plate. Did you see that breaking ball? That's not a bad pitch to throw to Adam Jones here after what we've seen against the fastball against him. Especially that first pitch, fastball. Jones to strike out in a single. So you got the leadoff double in the inning. Now two outs. The runner still at second, and he did start off Jones off speed that time, but missed. Looked like a split finger pass. A little contrast in center fielders in this game where they play trap playing very deep in center field. We saw Adam Jones play extremely shallow. In center field for Baltimore. Nava is very deep in left as well. Mahone normally plays a deep right field. Pitch was missed by Jones, so it's one and one. Adam Jones has been a very productive player for the Baltimore Orioles. He's now 
30 years old. First year with them was the 2008 season. He broke into the big leagues in 2006 with Seattle. And here he lifts a fly ball into right center. It's not very deep at all. Cole Calhoun will make the catch. And after that leadoff double, Tropiano gets tough, retires the next three in a row. Sixth inning coming up, 1 0 Baltimore. Greater coverage of baseball. Tigers beat Jays today 3 to 2. Victor Martinez home run is 17. Over over Houston right now, 3 0. And get later on tonight, Texas takes on Minnesota. They're just 3 7 last 10. But a game break in the White Sox game in Chicago against Atlanta. Frazier goes yard. <laughs> Frazier, number 25 for the Chicago White Sox. Three games over 500. <laughs> Cole Calhoun will lead it off and he checks it that one and went around. You're mentioning that Minnesota Texas game later tonight. Kyle Loesch has been called up to get the start in that one for the Texas Rangers. They have been reeling. But they still have uh, first place in hand in the AL West. There's yeah, this, one that's low. It's three and seven. We mentioned that last time but they were, had on, been on a, an amazing streak of twenty nine and eight. In the previous 37 games. Still 20 over 500. Next one on Cole Calhoun, and that one is low. Boy, when this game started, Mark, Gallardo walked three of the first six batters, and you started to think, well, it's just a matter of time, but you keep waiting for it to happen. He's held the Angels to no run so far through the first five. And he hasn't walked any since the second inning. He's just stayed away pretty yeah. much. He'll show in for effect, staying away, forcing you to hit to the big part of the yard. Two balls, two strikes. Next pitch, and that's high. And then for effect. He does, it doesn't bother him going 3 2. He's had a number of three ball counts in this game, that's for sure. He's had four to make that five full counts. And a lot of times they'll come right back with that backdoor breaking ball after a fastball up and in. Calhoun getting adjusted in the batter's box. You see Trout waiting on deck. Payoff pitch, and that one's lifted high in the air, but foul on the right side. It's way out of play. On a swing like that, we go back to my Hyundai key of the game. I love rock and roll with a swing like that from Cole Calhoun, and the order up behind him with Trout and Pujols. For some action here to drive some baseballs and give 
the Angels and Tropiano to lead here. Again, the 3 2. This is grounded on the left side, out of the reach of Hardy, and that's through into left center field. So Cole Calhoun gets his first hit of the day. And that is the first time the Angels have had the leadoff batter on in an inning today. Well, we got two parts. Well, one part of that, that was the roll. Now we're looking for the rock. <laughs> that roll through the infield turf. Now Mike Trout up there to do some damage. You got to walk me through all this, Scooby. <laughs> I catch on, but sometimes it takes a little extra time. <laughs> Here's Mike Trout. And the pitch, he takes that one low. Trout coming into the game and only faced Gallardo three times. He had two hits against him. Today he is 0 for 2 against him. Next pitch. A little bit low. The Angels have had four hits, but they've all come now in the last three innings. They've all been singles. Trout looks one over, and that's on the outside corner. Look at that, Gallardo. He doesn't give in. He's not going to go and throw a fastball into a little. Cut fastball outside corner. Been giving up a lot of home runs of late. Here's the next pitch. Trout takes that one. A called strike two and two. A speed pitch. And not giving in on the fastball count. Room with changeup. First base, back goes Cole Calhoun. Calhoun with the hit here to start off the inning. Extends his hitting streak to nine games in a row. <laughs> two two delivery. That's a little poke in the right. That's going to fall in for a base hit. Played in on a hop by Rickert. So the Angels have something brewing with two on back to back singles to start off the sixth and Albert Pujols who singled his last time up will be the batter. That was a very impressive swing for Trout. Look how deep that fastball got into the strike zone area for Trout and he hits that ball hard to right field for a single. You know, a lot of trust in your hands and ability to have that coverage out over the plate. Trout once again using the whole field. Movement down to the bullpen for Baltimore now. 90 pitches thrown for Gallardo facing a guy that's had some numbers against him. Gibbons down to the bullpen now for Baltimore. Michael Gibbons. And here's the pitch on Albert. That one is low. Boy, I'll tell you what, Adam Jones is just daring Albert Pujols to hit a ball to center field. Look how shallow he's playing with Albert at the plate. I mean, he usually plays shallow, but Albert has power. And four career home runs against Gallardo. And a ton in his career. There's one that's low. Yeah, I mean, uh, you look at Albert's. Home run total 575 and I'm getting a whole lot of respect from Adam Jones where he's positioned right now. 438 career hitter against Gallardo. That's how good he has hit him. And there's some power numbers in there also. Including 12 RBI. Looking to add on to that total. 2-0 is the count. Next delivery he takes that one all the way, and that one misses inside and high. 3-0. Albert has been very aggressive on the green lay 3-0, but he's expanded his strike zone. Albert looking at center one right now. Don't help him out. He will not give in. He will not challenge the middle part of the plate unless it's a mistake. 
Here's the next pitch and he will take it outside. He walks on four straight. So now they're loaded for Nava. And again this is the spot that would have been Crone's spot. So let's see what Nava does here with runners everywhere. No outs. Angels down by a run. Fourth walk given up by Gallardo. This pitch total he had 21 pitches in the second 22 in the fourth 16 already in this inning in his 95th 94th pitch thrown out of the zone to Albert Pujols. Now we're getting ready to bat with the bases loaded one situation before today with the bases loaded. Oh for one. Time up with the bases loaded this year. He struck out. He has two career grand slams. Here's the pitch. And he hits this one well. Out in right field. Rickard is chasing that ball. It's off the base of the wall. One run scores. A second run will score. And Nava with a long two run single gives the Angels a 2 1 lead. I'll tell you what, that was a very impressive base running by Albert Pujols to get the third base because Trout. Was waiting just a little bit. He turned on the afterburners to go ahead, the go ahead run. The great base running by Albert and a perfect swing from Daniel Nava. Tries to go inside with a slider. He was ready for that inner half of the plate and he rocketed it off the wall. But Rickard got it in quickly. Just a little bit high throw, allowed two runs to score. So that'll be a knockout blow. Gallardo will be lifted. A pitching change coming up here in the sixth. Nava giving the Angels a two to one lead with the bases loaded. Go back to the base running here by Albert. Is this baseball is squared up by Nava? You got Calhoun going back to the base. Trout going back just in case it's caught. But Albert reads that right away off the wall and cruises easily in the third base. Excellent base running by Albert. And time now for in and out. Who's in? Who's out? You see Gallardo. A little bit upset, lifted, and Michael Gibbons is the new pitcher for Baltimore. 26 year old right hander. He's a former shortstop who switched to pitching just a few years ago. And his first delivery here that's way low and inside on G Man Choi. And his fastball is 92 to 96. He'll have a slider and changeup. That arm angle looks like he's throwing as a shortstop. <laughs> Gibbons is one. Six games as a reliever this year, six and one record, 34th appearance, 3.52 ERA. He's been a big strikeout pitcher this season, and there's a wild pitch by the catcher Joseph, breaking for the play was Albert. Now he jams the brakes on and gets back to third. That's a good decision because that, that fastball was firm back to the backstop. They could have had a play unless you're going to score, especially with no outs. As Cole and Trotter laughing at Albert, how quick he got back to the base. 
overthrown pitch right away. Joseph's back there, and, and Gibbons is rated home plate. They're going to get him at home. Good decision for Albert to go back, but also good decision for Nava to get into scoring position himself. On that play, Nava was able to move up, so he's at second on the wild pitch. And here's the next one on Choi. That's another pitch low and in. And boy, that was a good stop as well by the catcher Caleb Joseph. I mean, all three of these pitches almost the exact same spot. Well off the inside corner. And we know they're trying to pitch Choi inside, but these pitches are way inside. Next delivery, that's low and inside. Gibbons was a second round pick of the Orioles and Choi is going to uh, take first base there. So he had trouble uh, locating to him. That's going to reload the bases. And Dave Wallace the pitching coach out there to talk to Gibbons and try and uh, get him a little bit focused after that four pitch walk. Remember we talked about it in the opening turn during the four game win streak ten times the Angels have had multi run innings we will make that 11 now with these two runs at least in this inning. Still no outs. Giovatella the batter. And here's the pitch on Johnny. And that's in there. That's the first strike thrown by Gibbons. Giovatella three for nine with the bases loaded this season in his career 429 batting average. Impressive. Here's the next pitch. That's low and away. Boy, he's missing low and away against the first couple of Angel hitters here. Albert, Nava, Choi on the bases. Givatel looking to drive a ball. And he lifts this one high in the air into shallow right field. Rickert is under. I don't know if it's deep enough to get Albert in, and there will be no advancement whatsoever. Albert only straight a couple feet off the bag, so it's a shallow fly out, first out. That's one of those pitches too for Giovatella where he has been so good. That was right down the heart of the plate. He was looking to hit something in the air, but got underneath enough to pop it up the shallow right. Well, you can kind of sense why Buck Showalter has gone to Gibbons in this situation. He'd like a strikeout or two. He didn't hit one there, but he got the out. But Gibbons is definitely a strikeout pitcher. And here's one that's uh, bounced up the left side. It carries over the shortstop. They go to second and the relay to first. And that's a double play. So Gibbons comes in and gets the job done. Angels have a 2 1 lead. Bottom of the six we go.
that matters during our 70s themed weekend when the Angels take on the Chicago White Sox on Saturday, July the 16th. 6.05 first pitch. That one coming up a week from today. Enjoy a groovy post-game fireworks show presented by Wells Fargo. Visit angels.com slash promotions to purchase your tickets today. Say groovy very well, Terry. <laughs> so the Angels have the lead in this ball game, but boy, you were hoping for maybe a little bit more in the top of the inning. Nava with the big swing himself. Lined it off the wall in right, scoring two. Kim, the first batter up for Baltimore, and he lines a base hit into left center field. First ball swinging. And with the shift on, yeah. it's a right by the spot where the shortstop, Anderson Simmons, could have been playing. The three infields on the right side of the infield, he stays back, and he was trying to hit the ball that way. He did a very nice job of letting that baseball travel. Kim, who had a hit last night, gets his first one here today. And the batter will be Manny Machado. Went into a ground out his last time up, and a strikeout double play his first at bat. Takes that one low. Piano right now at 85 pitches. Here's the next one, and that's in there. One on one. Good changeup there in a fastball count. Piano has a plus changeup. Here's the next delivery, and that's foul back behind the plate. Tomorrow, when the Angels wrap up this series against the Orioles, Tim Lincecum will get the start. It'll be the first time he's ever pitched at Camden Yards, only the second time he's ever faced the Orioles, and the only other time uh, coming into that outing tomorrow was on the 16th of June back in the 2010 season. So over six years ago between appearances for Linsick and against Baltimore. And he had a 10 strikeout game in six innings against him. But that was a long time ago. Two and two the count on Machado. Next pitch popped in the air into right field waiting for it to come down and squeezing it is Cole Calhoun great location to that pitch off the outside corner try to look at some other pitch he got a fastball instead and off the end of the bat routine fly ball to right well executed by Nick Tropiano Angels bullpen is quiet. The guy who hasn't been quiet in this series is getting ready to bat. That's Trumbo. He's homered in each of the first two games. Four RBIs for him in this series. He was homered today, his first time up. It was leading off the bottom of the second, and it's been the only Baltimore run. Trumbo has rolled in to eight double plays, though. He's shown the power swing so far in the series, but he can roll into a double play. Doesn't run very well. And the pitch, he swings and misses that one. Strike one. Eight strikeouts today for Tropiano. Coming into the sixth inning, he had had one, at least one in every inning. Here's the next pitch. Low, good block by Bandy. Well, the Angels came into the action today with a little four game winning streak. Three different times this season. The Angels have put together four wins in a row. They've yet to win five in a row. So trying to do that for the first time. Need to 
protect the lead here as we get a little later in this ball game. We're in the bottom of the sixth. Chris Davis waiting on deck. Showalter flip flop Trumbo and Davis today in the batting order and the pitch and that is right in there. And he painted that fastball, tried to go outside corner, kind of ran down in the middle. I think you go right now with a break of ball down and away. You can see if you get that swing and miss. Definitely avoid the inner half of the plate against Trumbo. So we can go with the break of ball. Here's the next pitch on Trumbo takes low. Haven't gotten the official attendance, but they have another nice crowd here. About over 40,000 again for this one. Two balls, two strikes, the count. Trumbo swings and hits a ball well in the center field. Trout is out on the warning track. He'll gather it in right near the rim of the track. That one stays in play. Just a long out. And Kim does not advance on that one. He was all the way near second when that ball was being caught by Trout. So no chance to tag up on it. Yeah, at all speed, could have been a split finger fastball. He hit it well, but to the deepest part of the yard, right in front of the 410 side. Brown able to run that one down. It's a good buddy. To get back to that wall and catch it. Just missed it. Mark Trumbo. So here's Davis. Been fairly quiet so far this weekend. One for five against Angels pitching. The one hit his first time up today, a single. Left handed powder with very good power. Over to first and diving back goes Kim, who led the inning off with a single. And a toss over to first base, and Kim is back. And you see Kim and Choi both. Natives of South Korea. Jim Choi was saying earlier today, he has competed in the past against Choi, has competed against Kim, and doesn't know him all that well, although they are countrymen, and he's excited to be back with the Angels today and know that he was going to compete against them at the major league level. Who was that for Watson? South Korea, to see that. One ball, no strikes to count. And tie it away. Two balls, no strikes on Davis. Scope would be up next. Piano is ready and delivers. And this one was lifted high in the air into right center field. Should be an easy play. Waiting for it to come down. Squeezing it is Trout. And the inning is over. Free fly ball out to leadoff single, but Tropiano keeps him off the scoreboard. 2 1 Angels.
Calhoun with a single run scored. Same with Trout. Albert single. Big RBI single. Two RBI single, I should say, by Nava and a walk. A couple walks by Choi. It's a bottom of the order success, too, with a couple hits. Bandy with one. Simmons with one. And the Angels, look at how well they've been swinging the bat last seven games. Just under nine runs per game. And Tropiano would love to see some more runs now. Well, Tropiano has given the Angels six innings so far today. And we see some action starting in the Angels' bullpen as Androton Simmons will lead things off. Singled his last time up to extend his hitting streak to 11 games in a row. So he faces Gibbons, and the first pitch uh, cut and a miss. J.C. Ramirez is the pitcher warming up for the Angels in the bullpen. And uh, elevated bullpen behind the wall out there in deep left center. Here's the pitch. That's a shot up the middle. That's going to fall in for a base hit. Simmons stays hot. Second hit for him in this one. And top of the order, Escobar looking to keep his hitting streak alive will be the next batter. Yeah, another multi hit game for Simmons. And he's been doing a nice job as far as getting that toe, that two toe tap down and then driving middle part of the field. Swing has been very, very consistent. Not be surprised right now. I think it's one of those times where Mike Sosa is trying to expand a lead here. Maybe put a hit and run on. Trusted Escobar, especially because he hits the ball so well the other way on the ground. The toss over to first, diving back to the bag goes Simmons. Not a big base stealer, only two this year, and just five last year with the Atlanta Braves. Escobar hasn't gotten the ball out of the infield today. There goes Simmons and the pitch. It's nubbed out near the mound. Only one chance for an out first base as Gibbons will throw out the Angel leadoff man, Yunel Escobar. But moving up to second base is Simmons. The Angels have a one out base runner for Cole Calhoun. The reason why you see a hit run put on last 18 hits for the Angels all have been singles. So you're going to put guys in motion to have success. Calhoun had a single his last time up. Givens with the pitch. And that's low and away. And all those strikes. Spent the first three years in his pro career as a position player, a shortstop. Didn't hit much. He always liked his arm and converted him to a pitcher. He goes at six foot even, 210 pounder from Tampa. And what his splits aren't real, real good. 172 right handed batters against him, but left handed batters, 413. Next delivery, a little bit low and outside. Waiting on deck for the Angels is Mike Trout. Here's the next delivery. Yeah, that's fouled back behind the plate. Yeah. We got a good swing at that one. Yeah, just as he was following through, the hand slipped off the bat, though. Get some pine tar. Some stick in the middle to make sure you get able to keep that hand on the bat on the follow through. Take some time out there on the mound. He 
Looking at the base runner Simmons, the pitch. This is bounced to scope. Backhands has time. The second baseman will throw out Calhoun, and Simmons goes to third. Pitch out away, and Cole pulled that ball. It's been very good of late as driving that ball to left center field. Just kind of hit it well, but pulled it. Made the scope, who's made some very good plays defensively in his first two games. So Mike Trout is the batter. It means a run. We'll see if he can come through. He takes the first one a fastball, 94 miles per hour. It's in there. Trout has had a good month in July. He'll be representing the Angels. Tuesday in the All-Star Game in San Diego. The American League will be the home team in that game. So they will bat in the bottom of each inning, even though they play in a National League ballpark. Here's the next pitch. It's a called strike. One and two on Trout. Looks like we might see another slider here. Very important for. Simmons to recognize that just in case he bounces it. One wild pitch for Gibbons this year, though. Trout takes that one inside. Fastball. Close on that one. First at bat for Trout was called out on a high pitch. It was a little bit off the strike zone, but this gets the upper part of the strike zone. Hits the target very well. Gibbons does. Joseph keeps that glove out, but Trout got that call. Here's the 3 2 delivery. Trout swings at it, fouls it back behind the plate. As normal, seeing a lot of pitches again in the bat for Trout, averaging 4.41. Pitches per plate appearance. Trout ended up fouling that one back in a section where there are a lot of Angel fans here. Here's the next pitch, and there's a swing and a miss. He threw that fastball by him at 96 miles per hour. So the Angels leave a runner at third. Seventh inning stretch time coming up. 2 1 Angels.
This telecast of Angels Baseball on Fox Sports West is brought to you by Hefford and Insurance Brokers. Insurance and financial services for you and your business. Visit hefins.com. Here in the bottom of the seventh inning, the Angels will go to the bullpen for the first time. So J.C. Ramirez will take over. Nick Tropiano, the starter, works six innings. And along the way, he gave up five hits a run. Walked one the way it turned out and struck out eight. Also threw a wild pitch and gave up a home run. Tropiano threw 97 pitches today. 58 of them for strikes. Very impressive outing for Tropiano. So J.C. Ramirez will take over. We saw him work a scoreless inning in last night's game. Worked the seventh inning last night. Did give up a hit and a walk that kept him from scoring. Hard throwing right hander. Today's attendance here in Baltimore 43,288 for 3288. And the first pitch on scope. That one is cut on a miss. He came in with a slider. Next delivery, there's a swing and a miss. Went right back to the same pitch. That's a good hard slider once again. He's maintaining his balance, not overthrowing. Ramirez with the Angels, eight strikeouts in seven and two thirds innings, allowed two runs. And this is his eighth appearance with the Halos. Angels trying to protect this one run lead. The pitch lifted in the air into left field. Coming over is Nava, but it's going to drop it. Two feet in front of him. So that is a two strike lead off hit. Scope is on. And on the fastball, 0 2 fastball. An angle once again coming in for, for Nava, unable to get there in time. But still, again, that was a pitch right there where you try to expand the strike zone. A little bit too much of the strike zone for Ramirez against a very good hitter in scope. So here's the shortstop Hardy who doubled his last time up. He's had a one for two day, and he takes that one on the outside part of the plate. J.C. Ramirez in the brief time he's been with the Angels top out at 99 miles per hour. Here's the next pitch and that one you know, fastball it's low and away. Ramirez is pitched in the majors with the Phillies the Diamondbacks the Mariners this year with the Reds. Now with the Angels. The first back to the bag goes Scope. Just one stolen base and two attempts for Scope this year. Angels are getting more action in the bullpen. Here's the next delivery. That's a liner out of the reach of Simmons, and that's going to roll out to Nava. That's another hit. Well, Ramirez has come in and given out back to back hits for the six and seven hitters, and the Rickert will be the next batter. Again, both pitches on the inner half of the plate, almost the same exact location. Joe Smith quickly getting ready. Now we mentioned Baltimore doesn't bunt a lot. I would think this would be the time Mike Sosha might see a bunt against his team. Rickard, number eight hitter in their lineup. Ed Wieters is waiting on deck to pinch hit. There's Rickard around to bunt, and he ends up taking the first pitch. Rickard has won 
Martin sack bunt this year. And he's around the bun and ends up holding up on that one. And they're going to go for the peel. And they say he was holding. 2 0. See if he did bring that bat back. High pitch. And he was able to bring it back in the last second. And barely got out of the way of that pitch inside. There's a 2 0. He's around the bun again. Drops it out in front of the plate. It's fielded by Ramirez. One play first in time. But the sacrifice does advance the two runners. Now they have them at second and third with only one out. And Weeders will be pinch hitting for Joseph. That'll be a 1 4 sack bun. The leaders with a lot of big hits in his career versus the Angels. Mike Sosa looking on. Going to go after him here, especially with Adam Jones on deck. Although you get a double play with him, he goes righty versus righty. Hoping that leaders not quite ready to try to catch up to the fastball from Ramirez being on the bench today. So their all-star catcher will pinch hit. Leaders was quiet last night. He was 0 for 5. Here's the pitch. He takes it for a called strike. Peters is a pinch hitter this year. One for three. A couple of runs driven in. Key moment here as the reliever J.C. Ramirez delivers. And it's a fly ball that's hit in a very shallow center field. Trout on a late start. Going wow. back, making an unbelievable over the shoulder grab and firing it towards the plate that's, is the shortstop Simmons. That is incredible. Willie Mays like. Uh, that is unbelievable. Take a look at this play. This is a top tier play. Brought to you by Arco. Playing in and look how far. Anderson Simmons goes to catch this baseball over the shoulder. We talked about it before, Terry. I don't think I've ever seen anybody cover that much ground on a pop up, and that is just unbelievable. That was magic right there. It really was. The ball just disappeared in his glove. Oh. <laughs> There's no way. That ground he covered, the distance. And they That's don't score either. No. You know, they get the out and the runner doesn't score I mean, from third. He's anticipating that baseball being down one, first and foremost, but you also know the arm strength of Simmons. Mike Sochi is going to make a pitching change. Joe Smith had been warming up. You see Simmons and what a grab it was. Angels still have the lead. Pitching change coming up in the bottom of the seventh.
It's two to one here with two outs in the bottom of the second. The only reason why they are still leading this game is Anderson Simmons. Look exactly where he's playing. He's playing in and how far he's got to run straight over the shoulder to catch his baseball. Presence of mind to get it in quickly also so no run scored. Rivera's <laughs> going, I, you know what, if you're on the mound there, you're, you're thinking there's absolutely no way you're getting it out on that one. He had a run at absolute full speed, and it's a wonder how he was even able to keep his eye on where the ball was going. Yeah, he had no angle to go for, which right. makes it easy. He's going straight back. Yeah. Well, he said it all season. He's a difference maker defensively. What a play. So it's still a 2-1 Angels lead. Joe Smith is the new pitcher. Last time we saw him a couple days ago against the Tampa Bay Rays, he gave up a run in an inning of work. And he comes in here. They still have runners at second and third. Batter is Adam Jones, two outs. A hit. The Orioles probably take the lead and out the Angels will take the lead to the eighth. Joe is ready and drops the ball and that's a block. Oh my goodness. The ball dropped out of his hand. That's a block and the game is tied at two. Things you don't see really ever. I don't know when the last yeah. time was I saw that happen. Wow, what a bad break right there. The other runner is awarded the advancing base, so Hardy is at third. Scope scores on the block. Let's try to quickly forget that. If you're Joe Smith. Been around a long time. He's been very good as far as this moving forward. 2 2 ball game here in the bottom of the seventh. The pitch. And a check swing. They say that Jones was holding. One ball, no strikes. Boy, after that miraculous play. By Simmons, and then you have a block bringing in the tying run. And a drop ball by the pitcher. 2 0 oh now on Adam Jones. And he takes that one outside. 3 0. Oh. And the next delivery. That's right in there if we're called strike a sinker. Hunsu Kim, their left fielder, who's had a hit and a walk today. He would be up next. Two outs. And now the plate umpire, Jordan Baker, uh, turns around. This is upset with the uh, music being played. Here's the next pitch, and that one misses. He walked them. Going back to that ball by Joe Smith. As he's trying to, what he does, he taps the glove, and the baseball slipping right out of his hand right there as he's going to get in position to deliver the baseball. That's his normal routine where he has that tap in the glove, and then the follow through in his delivery. So here's Kim at the plate. First pitch takes it for a called strike. More speed. Kim has only driven in 11 runs this season. He's not had an RBI so far in the series, although he's 
And a pair of hits. Here's the next pitch. He takes that one low. Same pitch, but low. One ball, one strike. Even you go back to that play by Simmons. He had to go back on that one 111 feet to make that play. Next delivery. And that one is low. And Joe, after walking Jones, has fallen behind two and one on Kim. Smith, the second reliever in the inning, delivers right in there. Good backdoor breaking ball for Joe Smith. He's giving Kim a steady diet of that pitch there. They're all clocking in right around 79 miles per hour. Two two. And that one is waved at and missed, and that was a sinker. He gave him the harder stuff there, struck him out. The inning is over. But a freak run for Baltimore. They've tied it at two as we head to the eighth. Baltimore. I'm Patrick O'Neill, and wow, what a bottom of the seventh we just saw. Hope you stick around after this one to join us for Angels Live, brought to you by your SoCal Mazda dealers. I'll be joined by Jose Moda, and already in that bottom half, saw the best play by a shortstop I've ever seen. I've never seen a pitcher just drop the ball for a balk like that. We got ourselves a tie ball game. But you know, there's one section here. It's got Angels family and friends. There's about 20 to 30, and you got Paul Tropiano, Nick Stad, and the wife and so his mom are coming in from West Islip New York. You also also have Daniel Nava's wife Rachel there in the front row. So when when Nava Gooby had that big hit and Nitro was doing his thing on the mound high fives all around. It was something to see a lot of fun there. Yeah that's great. I mean we've always seen the family sick. We get a good view from where we're at here doing this game. It's great to see that enthusiasm here in Camden Yards. So Albert will lead off the eighth inning in a 2 2 game. New pitcher is Brad Brock. And he's an all star this year in the first pitch. It's Right in there for a called strike. Might not be a household name, but he's an all star. 39th appearance, all in relief. Five wins, two saves, one loss. ERA 0.95. And there, Albert takes one low and away. 56 strikeouts in 47 and one third innings for Brock and opponents are hitting 148 against him. Yeah, his fastball is 93 to that 97 range slider. Very good changeup. Had an excellent year for Baltimore a year ago, and this one's tipped foul by Albert. Leader stays in the game. He's Rock's battery mate behind the plate. He's the one to hit that ball that Simmons made an unbelievable play. According to Statscast, he went back 111 feet to make that, and at a speed of 18.7 miles per hour to make that play. Oh. That's why he's Simba. And the pitch is a liner right to the shortstop Hardy. 
Albert hit it hard right at the shortstop. Nava will be the batter. That's all you can do is square up a baseball, and Albert did so. Hardy positioned perfectly to be able to catch that line drive. Nava looking for a big game as well with the two RBI. See if you can try to turn on one here. He went up there the right field where it's going to carry well. First pitch on Nava that's up and in. Brad Brock was a 42nd round pick of the Padres in 2008 went to Monmouth University. And the pitch that one is inside. I don't even think the draft goes 42 rounds anymore. No. The next delivery, and that one is fouled off. A couple of the Orioles relievers, Brock, who's pitching now, and their closer, Zach Britton, headed to the All Star game. Pitcher they're hoping to get back soon is Darren O'Day, who's been very solid for them for a number of years now. He's been on the disabled list with a hamstring injury going back to early June in the pitch. Lifted in the air in the right center. It's going to fall in for a base hit. Jones will cut it off. He'll hold Nava to a single. But Nava on base for the third time today. One out single here in the eighth. And Choi will be the next batter. Yeah, anticipated base runner for Daniel Nava. He's had a good game. Wife happy right there with that swing. Todd Cunningham will come in to run and then he'll likely stay in the ball game in left field for Nava. So Nava leaves. He went two for three with a couple of runs batted in. That's bat starting to heat up a little bit. Especially with no CJ Crone, you're looking for some balance down in the lineup. Toss over to first. Cunningham gets back. He has pretty good speed. Get a toss to first. Close play. And Cunningham just got back. Right. He was almost picked off right there. That was mighty close. Big lead. And the smart decision by Cunningham to go to the back part of the base, a longer tag for the first base, but otherwise he's going to get him. Two career pick pickoffs. The Rockies allowed 30 stolen bases in 38 attempts in his career, so you can steal against him. Troy takes that one in there. Uh, fastball 93. Part of the year, he's allowed two stall bases and two attempts. Well, the infield at double play depth. Eighth inning. The Angels and the Orioles deadlocked at two. G Man Choi just rejoined the Angels today in the lineup. And again, a toss over the first base. Leaders has thrown out just under 26% of 25.9% of would be base dealers. And we talked about the hits of late for the Angels, a lot of singles. Again, it's going to force the issue to try to be aggressive, trying to steal a base potentially. Here's the next delivery on Choi, and he pops that one up foul on the left side. are hoping that Troy will be a spark offensively. He's had only one big league hit, so time will tell. He'll be getting some at bats in the absence of CJ Crone, who fractured his left hand last night. Go for some extra base type hits, too. Next pitch, Troy takes that one in. Troy is a patient hitter, that's one thing, even though. 
He only had the uh, one hit his first go around with the Angels earlier this season. Picked up a few walks. In a pickoff toss, we've seen Brock throw quite a bit over there since Cunningham has taken over as the pinch runner. And the next one on uh, Choi fouled off left side out of play. A little battle there for Choi trying to drive a ball. And Cunningham trying to time Brock try to steal a base potentially here. Asking for time. Brock is a pretty quick worker, and Choi was looking to slow him down right there. Now everyone appears set. Next pitch, and that one misses a fastball. Two and two. And that's the good thing when you're putting a little thread of a stolen base on a pitcher who's trying to be quick, a little slide step there, elevated that pitch. Here's the next one and Choi cuts it that one and he did not get off a real good swing right there. He was off balance struck him out on a fastball. Pretty good pitch to do some damage the other way but pulled off on a swing. So Giovatella is the next batter. Rock 30 year old right hander. Here's the delivery on Giovatello. That's outside. This game in the hands of both bullpens. Tropiano left the game with a lead. The Angels bullpen unable to protect it. Still anybody's ball game though here in the eighth. Next pitch, and it's tipped up the leaders. One ball, one strike. Gia Patel, that last the bat he had with the bases loaded, was trying to drive a ball in the air and just missed one. End up shallow fly to right field. But a pitch he generally will drive very well. Ball game closing in on the three hour mark and the pitch that's outside. Two and one. And the next delivery. Cut and a miss. 2 2. The Angels today have left some people on base. Stranded seven, five of them in scoring position. The Angels have left three on the third, two on the second. Cunningham draws another throw, dives back to the bag safely. It looked like he was going on that one. He had a pretty big lead. Brock, the second reliever of the day for the Baltimore Orioles. 2 2 count on Gia Vitella. He cuts at it and fouls it off on the right side.
Baltimore got the game's first run. Angels came back with a pair in the sixth to take a 2 1 lead. The Orioles tied it. Last inning bound the seventh. A block brought in the run. The pitch is a ball. Runner goes for second. He's thrown out. Weavers guns down Cunningham. And that's how the inning will come to an end. Angels Mike waiting Sosha's, right now. Yeah, Mike Sosha's looking in to see if they would indeed challenge this call. Still looking into the dugout to see whether or not the signal from the clubhouse is that challenge. Hand got in there. Well, it would have if he didn't have the knee blocking it, so I think he got him. Angels will not challenge the call, so. We're headed to the bottom of the eighth. We're tied at two in Baltimore. TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service. It delivers everything you have to come to expect and more. Watch every out of market game live in HD. As the pitch is a little bit low, you can watch it on over 400 supported devices. Includes a free subscription at, at Bat Premium. The number one app for live baseball blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. So Manny Machado takes the next delivery from Joe Smith and that evens up the count at one. Joe got the final out last inning but in the process dropped the baseball while working from the stretch and walked in the time run. Very unusual event. And that came right after the spectacular running over the shoulder grab by Androton Simmons on the ball that leaders had hit. Here's a shot that's going to clear the infield and drop into right center. It's a leadoff base hit for Manny Machado his first hit of the day. Very dangerous Mark Trumbo last night a home run the ninth inning and then today a home run with a powerful Trumbo in the second almost got another one. And Trout ran it down right in front of the 4 10 side again when Joe Smith is on this game he'll get a ground ball and it's the guy you can get two outs with on a ground ball and an infielder. Giovatella shaded towards second base Trumbo takes that breaking pitch in there for a called strike. Was two for four in his career versus Joe Smith. Trumbo takes right in there. 0 and 2 on him. Meantime, in the Baltimore bullpen, they have Zach Britton, their closer, the left hander, getting ready. 
He has been a lockdown closer for them this year. Here's the next pitch. Trumbo lifts one high in the air into left center field. But Trout has plenty of room out there. Calls and makes the grab. And no advancement by Manny Machado. So it's a first out here in the bottom of the eighth. That was good communication, too, for Trout. The call off Cunningham was running over there towards left center field. It's a better, easier throw. The second base by Trout to get in there quickly just in case Machado would try to tag up and advance in the scoring position. So here's Davis. Left handed batter with a lot of power. Pitch on Davis way outside. Angels do not have a left handed reliever right now on the roster. Will Smith facing this left handed batter in the pitch and that's outside. Two and oh. Diving back to the bag goes Manny Machado. Manny Machado, for whatever reason, isn't running this season. He's not had a stolen base yet 20 a year ago. It's taken, and that one misses ball three on Davis. You've got to be careful here with this Davis, though. He will have the green light. Good power the other way also. Here's the next delivery and he bounces it through the right side. Boy, Troy did not even hardly move at all to his right. That ball wasn't that far from him. It rolls in the right field and runners at the corners. Davis with his second hit of the day and Stoke will be the next batter. Choi off the bag. I don't know if he read that real well off the bat. So now Joe Smith is in trouble. The Orioles have the go ahead run at third base. Era hits in the inning. Pitch on scope. He fouls the first one back behind the plate. And he's always very aggressive. So ran that break ball and stayed in on him. And the Orioles here, eighth inning, a nail biter in Baltimore. Next delivery. That's a shot that's going to go through in the left center and give him the lead. Scope. He scored the tying run last inning. He got blocked in, and now he gives him the lead with an RBI hit. 3 2 Baltimore. So she's going to be going down to the bullpen now. Scope has really hit the ball well in these first two games. You see this pitch was out over the plate. Scope stayed back in the well and lines it into the outfield for a single, an RBI.
Fans, don't forget, don't miss the biggest stars in baseball led by the Angels, Mike Trout, as they all get together on the same field. It's the 2016 MLB All-Star Game Tuesday, live from San Diego, only on Fox. I've heard from people already down there in San Diego. They said it, it's fantastic already. The crowd's all over the place. And getting a chance to see the best player in baseball in Mike Trout in a couple days. So the new pitcher is Fernando Salas. You see his numbers. ERA high this year, 5.18 in 39 games. And a good job of stranding inherited runners. He comes in here with a pair on. And here's the pitch on Hardy. And that is in there. Nothing in one to count. Dave Smith, who leaves, went two thirds of an inning, got an out last inning, one out this inning, allowed three hits along the way, a run, two on his property, walked one, struck out one, and also committed a block. Here's the next pitch. Hardy bounces it right between the legs of Salas, but fielded by Giovatella, touches the bag. And then throws to first base, and that's a double play. It was better that he didn't touch that baseball. Well, it split his legs, but it turns into a pair right there. It's 3-2 as we head to the ninth. Baltimore on top. Inning, the Orioles bring in their closer, the All Star Zach Britton, and he has been lights out this season. He has not had a single blown save this year, and he will be looking for his 26th consecutive save this season. He's got a power fastball. It's going to be that 94 to 98 range. And slider, he throws about 91% of his pitches are fastballs. He will sink and cut his fastball. His numbers overall this is his 37th appearance, two wins, one loss, the 25 saves. ERA is outstanding, 0.76. Opponents are hitting 161 against them. Better than a strikeout in inning this year, 43 and 35 and two thirds innings. So here's Johnny Giovatella. That one is right in there for strike one. Britton had 36 saves a year ago and 40 chances. Here's the next pitch. That one is low. Zach Britton has one of the best sinkers in the game. You can see how he turns that one over, pronates the wrist to be able to create sinking action at 97. Your scouts talk about him. They always talk about he's an extreme ground ball pitcher, and if he's not getting ground outs, he's getting strikeouts. Here's the next one, and that's fouled off over by the batter waiting on deck, 
Jeff Bandy. See how he cuts a fastball, sinks a fastball. So he's got east and west action on a 96 to 97 mile an hour fastball. Decent career numbers against the Angels. Not great. 2.57 ERA. Has given up one home run in 14 innings, five saves. He's in front on Giovatella, and here's the next pitch. That one dismissed a little bit low. 28 year old lefty reliever Zach Britton from Weatherford, Texas. He's got the Sean Doolittle pose going with the glove on the shoulder. Here's the next pitch. Grounded right to the shortstop. Hardy has it. His throw in time. One gone here in the ninth. If the Angels are going to come back in this ball game. They're going to have to do it against one of the best closers in the American League. Bandy one for three today, the eight hole hitter. Here's the pitch, and that one is fouled up right by the plate. See that movement on his fastball there. It started out middle part of the plate, ended up down and in. Here's the next delivery. And that's fouled back behind the plate. Going back to the start of last season, Britain's success rate in save situations 94%. So we have a 6% chance to get him here in this inning. Doesn't mean it can't happen, but the odds are kind of stacked against you right now. Here's the pitch. Chopped on the third base side, hugging the line foul. Each way rolls about three quarters of the way up there. Weeder's going to have a quick conversation. Britain. That conversation was this is expand the strike zone, bounce one if you have to. Because Bandy, if you make a mistake, he's got good power. He can get it out of here, even with that power sinker that Britain has. The ball will leave this ballpark. Britain gave up only three homers, though, a year ago in 64 appearances. And so far this season, he's allowed just one home run and now 37 appearances. Two strikes the count. Next pitch. And that one bounced away from the catcher. Weeder has been on. One and two. Wrap up game of the weekend series here tomorrow. Lincecum against Tillman. Nick Sosia did not commit to how the Angels' rotation will come out of the All Star break. Here's the two strike pitch. It's bounced right back to the pitcher. Britton Fields throws out Bandy. Two outs here in the ninth. First two batters rounding out. We love to find a way. There's a crowd on their feet right now to see Escobar get a chance to. Hit in this inning. That means Simmons would have to get on base, whether a hit or a walk. He's already got two hits. Rick is ready. Here's the next delivery. And the first one on Simmons is low. Zach Britton had a 
brother who was an infielder at one time in the Orioles organization. It was born in Panorama City, but I moved to Texas as a teenager, and this one fouled off on the left side. So one ball, one strike, ninth inning, two outs, Angels down by a run. And the next delivery. It's low. Two and one to count. The relievers, Bill Smith and Brad Brock, the pitchers of record. Simmons with a little squibber, softly hit right side. Bear handed by the second baseman Stoke will throw him out, and the ball game is over. And you talk about Britton getting all those ground balls. He got three of them. Another good play by Stoke, who's had a big series so far, both with the glove and at the plate. The big base hit, the go-ahead run as Baltimore evens up. Series of three and two. Britton picks up his 26th save. The All-Stars, Brock and Britton. 